retired professor, emeritus professor from the Netherlands. I taught there uh, intellectual history and philosophy history. Uh, yeah, and for the rest, uh, I try to do what uh, I think I should do, mm -mm. and do that as well as I can. And that's, these are my modest desires. <laughs> <coughs> well, I think that the difference is that uh, philosophy history, as uh, the very term indicates already, is um, a discipline, a philosophical, a philosophical subdiscipline. So it requires one to have a philosophical education, uh, so that one can also make use of all the technical and theoretical instruments that have been devised in the course of the centuries by philosophers in order to try to solve, as well as one can, the secrets of uh, historical writing. In my view, historical theory is something basically different in the sense that it uh, uh, asks itself the question how we relate to the past. It's more a form of existentialism it's a more form of uh, uh, what the past may mean to us, uh, how we deal to the past, how we deal with the past, in what way the past uh, is uh, part of our lives, and then a whole lot of other specializations uh, are appealed to, rather in the field of sociology, of psychology, etc. Which are very interesting, it can lead to very interesting results, but it does not lead to a deepening into the question of what historical writing as such is. And this is a question that, uh, in my view, will always remain, uh, will always retain its urgency in the same way that questions like what is a true statement or what is uh, a moral imperative or what's the nature of beauty. These are, always, these are also well, these kind of questions that are typical philosophical questions that philosophers ask since the days of Plato and Aristotle, all through the Middle Ages, the New Time, still now, and presumably in the foreseeable future as well. Uh, this is something one cannot say with certainty about theory of history, probably, it uh, may go on. We also have a low future. But it has a different focus, uh, it answers different questions, uh, it uh, is uh, also a different part of the academic world. It's far closer to history departments, whereas philosophy history, uh, yeah, in fact, it's, uh, it's something that should be taught in and should be part of a, phil of a philosophy department with the restriction that the philosopher, philosopher of history who has no experience of his own with philosophical writing is not be able to make much sense of it. And I think that many of my colleagues speak about, speaking about philosophy history make only too clear that they have little idea about what the practices of historical writing. Uh, well, it's the kind of question that I think, I think would be part rather of historical theory than of, the reflect, then of philosophy history. Uh, but um, I have a certain sympathy for the questions of nostalgia, and it has something to do with uh, well, uh, very uh, uh, incidental feature of myself, and that is that I have a certain nostalgia for a certain period of the past, <laughs> which is the 18th century, and uh, therefore when people start talking about having nostalgic memories about the past and all of the world. I can agree with that, uh, I can sympathize with that, for uh, I have that as well. And uh, I have often been wondering about this, uh, what's the background of this fascination that I have for the 18th century, and then, um, yeah, the uh, issue of how one should or could look at nostalgia certainly is uh, then a question that comes to mind. <laughs>